What up, everybody? Back again, Mr. Q to Raw. You know, stop across the globe, globally, you know, on this WWE NXT ordeal I'm on. You know, so today we're gonna talk about uh, a touchy subject, but still, we're gonna talk about my man, man, and business I grew up on, Hulk Hogan. And this is, man, Hogan ain't no racist. I don't care how nobody put it or whatsoever. Okay, we got to go back, man. You got to take it back to, like, 83, 84. You feel me? Even when he was going through the whole progress events, when it was going around the territories, making sure that, you know, um, WWE can stomp in any land that they wanted to. Um, that took a lot of guts, especially in Tesla 42, most definitely. But Hogan most definitely can't call him a racist, man. Because racist is going to try to hold the individual down on like a monetary, economic type of level to make sure that you can't elevate to a certain plateau. So let's just get racism straight when you say a person is racist. Nah, Hogan was far from that. Did a lot of business with Junkyard Dog, uh, Superfly Jimmy Snooker. And I mean, he got the money, he got the revenues, he got them spots in the company position. Not saying it's gonna be over him. Because in business, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, all of war, man, you know? 40 laws of power, you know? Never outshine the master type of ordeal. So I do believe Hogan was on that kind of time, and don't get me wrong. You know, cause Godfather, he got a lot of stuff to say about Hogan too as well, but I just say, as far as Hogan, he did help a lot of brothers out, man. Dennis Rodman in 1997, we saw him with um, um, DDP, Carl Malone, him Rodman. I'm going to just tell y'all, Hogan always kicked it with the brothers. Believe that. I mean, man, he been rocking with the brothers since the early 80s. You know what I'm saying? Probably when it wasn't cool. Maybe he didn't kick it with a lot of people on camera or on, like, public eyes. But deep down into him... Hulk Hogan is kind of a soul brother, low key. He got soul in him. Believe that, man. I'm a brother, and I tell you. Matter of fact, I get our story right now. And shout out to Hogan. I hope you see this one day. This is just to validate him that when they say Hogan a racist and all this, man, nah. Trust me, by far this man is not. Because if you understand what racism and bigotry is, it's a distinguishment between those two. Big difference. And I ain't gonna say he a bigot. It's it's some people you may not like. That's a certain color. Or how they do this, how they wear their pants. Dude, it's some black people don't like their own black people. So I, I, I just don't really get how when people try to put a certain boundary on how they feel about certain individuals. It's kind of oxymoronic. They're oxymorons if they really break it down to you. That's how it would sound. I've heard it a lot. I live in Florida, brother. So, But anyway, Hogan, man, has paved the way for a lot of brothers in the industry. Little people know. Let's not even count Mr. T, him at WrestleMania 1. He got Mr. T prime time. First WrestleMania ever in Vince McMahon business. Mr. T will always be. A product in the main event of Vince McMahon's business. I mean, so therefore itself, it speak volumes. And who was he next to? Hulk Hogan. You know. So, but you have people that have issues with certain people. It don't matter what walks of life they from. It don't matter the color barrier they from. It doesn't matter the religious status that they are from. You can't just say. Well, because this person doesn't like this certain particular one individual that he hates a whole, you know, th that's kind of wrong, I feel. Because I tell you, 2006, I was down in Miami. I was on South Beach. I, w I, had a, I had a hotel on Collins. I was staying in Washington. I was like three hotels down from the Seagull, I believe. But anyway... I woke up in the morning, um, 7.30 in the morning. I'm walking down Washington. I think I'm on like 12th in Washington. I'm on the far end. But anyway, I see Hulk Hogan and Nicholas getting out their white Mercedes, going into the tanning bed. Off like 12th in Washington. Yep, exactly. 
and I walk on my coffee. I'm walking down the street because I had been up hitting a couple spots early on the strip. And I say, man, I say, hey, Terry, I'll let him. He turned around. He said, hey, brother. He answered me and still in full. <laughs> he was in work mode. He was still working in work mode, but I respected it, man. It's much more respected, you feel me? And Hogan still showed his love. Him and Nicholas turned around, what's up, man? How you doing? And this was in 2006 when the Miami Heat won the NBA championship. Everybody was down there. We saw Jay Leno um, on South Beach, Britney Spears on South Beach. And I actually called Hogan and Nicholas that next morning from the party in for, you know, the aftermath. You know, we still there, so, yeah. But nah, man, I don't really see Hogan as a racist, man. And I will, well, I will say it like this. As far as all the guys in w, at WE and WCW over the years, of course Hogan is going to do what he got to do to keep his position. Everybody got to keep their spot. It don't matter what color you are. It don't matter what, 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 what walk of life you come from. When you playing in WWE and when you in that shark tank, man, it's like, Anything goes. Just kill it, be killed. You know? Hogan did it. Flair did it. Shawn Michaels did it. Triple H did it. I mean, come on, man. And I just named you four of the greats of this past 30 years. You know? So, of course, man, this is how the game go. So, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Wish the best for it. And we all get to watch our industry move on. To a better plateau, you know, for much more generations to come. And that's it, man. Because believe you me, I've seen this business in 1991, 92, and 93 when people thought the wrestling business would probably shut down. Yep, ratings were majorly low, especially when Vince McMahon had caught that steroid scandal. You know what I mean? Come on. He called in Jerry, hope Jerry probably come in and run the company. We never knew what wrestling may go to. But Vince overcame all of those odds and obstacles. And you're going to tell me things can't be done. That's why in this world you can't listen to people, man. People will tell you what they think. But it's like, what plateau have you actually reached? To even tell me on that, you know what I mean? Especially coming on a ground of coming on your own is hard, you know. You can work and retire at a spot in life, which would be great. But to eat off your passion and move towards and live off your passion, that's unbelievable. That's not work, man. Trust me. That's when things become not work. So, You know, I understand how these games go and these lanes. Just try to put it out here. You know. A little bit for my wrestling community. So. They got my insight pretty much on Hulk Hogan. Now, of course, I don't believe Hogan is a racist. If that's been the big question asked. On all platforms. I've been saying, nah, I don't. Nah. Man, you mean this? You could dislike anybody. It don't matter their color, nationality. Like that's a tool that can be used in the midst of something that what somebody feel. But if you really deal with all walks of life like I do, no. Nah. Some people don't like you because of who you are, but that's those individuals that's like way back off them and off the grid. I say that really have no interactions with. With other nationalities, those are the people that will be stuck on those lanes, you know. Or what old school grandparents' theories will be, you know what I'm saying? But in this new age, man, this is 2021, bro. If you still talking about that and on that on a racism level, you are so far behind. You like an old retarded gangbanger. Listen, racist people are no different than old, retarded-ass gangbangers. Remember I said that, you know. Grow up. That's that grow up, get off that old shit. Excuse my French. I know there's YouTube, people don't want me to use certain language, but it's all good. But yeah, man, when a person look at you and say, sometimes die, 
the times died. Sometimes with a person know and grew up on, you got to look in the mirror and look at yourself and understand what you know, baby. Them times have died. You know? It's a new day, new era. And that's how this life go out here. So, it's either A, you're going to either elevate, you know, <laughs> or you're going to deflate. <laughs> Guaranteed, you know, so... You know what I mean? I'm coming. It's only one way. And anybody a part of me and my umbrella, we only going one way, baby. You know? Like a skyrocket. You know what I'm saying? Surpassing the moon. Guarantee that. Shit, so. Yeah, man. That's just my input for Hulk Hogan. And I'm finna go to this spot in Clearwater Beach. I will be there the weekend of June 14th, 15th, 16th. Whichever the weekend that is. June 14th, 15th, 16th. We'll be going to Hogan's spot in Orlando. In Orlando. Yes, I am come, Hulk. So you will see Mr. Q2 Raw. And I do got to see you, man. Take some pictures. Because I've been seeing you from childhood since WrestleMania 3. My first pay-per-view event I ever watched live was WrestleMania 3, 1987. Indeed. But yeah. I want y'all to get off my boy Hulk's back. Get off Terry back. Give him some slack. And, um... I will see all y'all soon, okay? Mr. Q2 Raw, tuning out.